All right, so let's talk very briefly about flowcharts. Flowcharts are another tool that I really like using when I'm planning a program. And it's another one of those things where if you spend a little time on it, it actually pays off. Um, now, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot of folks that spend a lot of time flowcharting before they develop, unless they're really developing something complicated. Typically for programs like we're using in this class, a flowchart would be sort of a back of the envelope sort of thing, meaning you just sketch a few things just to remember where things go and how they connect. Um, and later in the course, that'll be okay. But first, we want to make sure you at least understand the basics of how to create a flowchart and more importantly, how to read a flowchart because they are common, um, not just in programming, but in all kinds of system design. Um, I've worked with flowcharts in virtually every job I've had, and most of those were not programming related at all. Um, it's just a way that we use to visually communicate how things occur. So you can see here that I started by planning my program with pseudocode. So I've got this program um, that asks for a user's name and then gives them a message. So I took a couple of minutes and thought about what that would look like in software, right? And I, so I, I did this. I asked them for their name, you know, I printed on the screen and then I, I make some decisions based on what the name is. Um, so now that I've kind of planned this out in pseudocode, I have an idea of what it's supposed to look like. I want to go ahead and draw it out as a flow chart so that I can, I can sort of see how the program will flow and how everything connects. Um, so I'm using um, Draw.io. Draw.io is the software that we'll use. Uh, certainly in my class, there are lots of options for drawing uh, flow charts, but, but for my class, we'll use Draw.io. Uh, exclusively because A, it's browser-based, which means you can use it on most any device, and B, because frankly, I don't want to have to keep up with learning or teaching a bunch of different kinds of flow charting. Um, when you go out into the real world, you're welcome to pick whatever software you want to use. There's a lot of great ones out there. All right, so let's start with drawing our flow chart. First, we need the symbols that best fit what we're doing. And so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on the flow chart symbols. And these are the ones we're going to use in our class. Now, I always get this question, are the symbols important? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? The symbols actually mean something. Uh, and so if you use the wrong symbol, then you've built your program wrong in Flowchart. Right? And that means if you hand your Flowchart to somebody else, they're going to read it wrong. Maybe they build it wrong. Uh, more importantly, you, you hand it to me and it's wrong, you're going to lose points. So we got to make sure we use the right symbols. So the first thing we had to do over here is we needed to figure out, all right, how do I ask a user for our name? All right, well, we need to start. So if I go over here and I hover, I'll actually see Terminators, right? So the Terminator, insert bad Arnold Schwarzenegger joke here. We'll start with a Terminator. I'm going to make it a little bit a little bit different here, a kind of pill shaped, and I'm just going to put in start. Every program must have a start, otherwise it doesn't start, <laughs> right? right? The next thing I need to do over here is I need to see, all right, I need to accept input from the keyboard and assign it to a variable. Now, I'm pretty loose on this. Um, what I really expect is to see you accept input so you're going to go down here and you're going to flip around until you see whichever one of these seems to be input. Let's see, database, decision, delay, direct data. All right, I'm looking through all these things and I'm looking for the different kinds of stuff I can use to decide what's my best input, all right? And uh, eventually I'm going to decide that uh, I just need to ask the boss what he wants, right? So the boss likes data. All right, I like this one because it's really generic. Um, there are specific ones for input and output, um, like document and, and uh, where's the other one? I can never remember, manual input. Um, those would be typical and common. I like data just because I don't want to make you learn a whole bunch of them right off the bat. So if you just use data, that'll be fine with me. Uh, we make them pretty, so we want to make sure it's about the same size as the other one there. And this is going to be accept input. All right, and I don't worry too much about that, but we wanna make sure that it's there. And I wanna connect them, right, because it's a flow. So you can see when I hover, I get this little green thing, drag down with my arrow and connect, and that's pretty. I got a nice straight line, middle to middle, with an arrow that tells me where the program's going. Really easy, right, straightforward. I can tell what it's supposed to do. All right, and then I'm gonna accept input, I'm gonna assign it to a variable. Again, a couple ways we can do this. I'm perfectly okay if you just wanna call it a process. 
Um, usually most people just use the square process and turn it into a rectangle. That's my preference. Uh, all right, so we have a nice little rectangle. Again, we try to make it the same size. We can see it's the same size and assigned a variable. Right. And again, I want my little green dots. Now notice if I go the wrong way with this, my arrow is wrong. And that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Because now it's telling me that the program is running up instead of down. That's bad, right? So we want to definitely not have our arrows going the wrong way. Make sure we have our arrows. They're nice and straight, center to center. You'll notice I don't have things like this where everything's off center and crooked. That's not okay with me. Everything must be really perfect. One of the things you'll learn in this class is um, in programming, we have to be exceedingly detail oriented. So sometimes it's, I'll seem a little crazy, but I will have uh, exceedingly detailed requirements. All right, so I'm gonna assign a variable. I'm gonna print to the screen. A couple of ways I could do that. I could use the uh, display button. Where is that thing over here? Display, uh, I know it's on here somewhere. Looks kind of like a crooked monitor. Delay loop. Anyway, where are you display? Anyway, data is fine with me for, for displaying. Again, it, both input and output, it works just fine for me. Um, make sure they're the same size again. Um, is that the same? Not quite. So let's make that the same. Bye. There we go. And then I can say this is going to be. Yeah. All right. And connect them again. And again, this is all super easy. And if you don't remember all of this yet, that's okay. Um, you'll get it as we go. I'll make it a little bit smaller here because I got to add some stuff. All right. The next thing that happens here is I've got to ask a question. If name is Bob, do something. If not, do something else. All right. So my decisions are always diam diamonds. So here's my decision. Make it about the same size as everybody else there. And uh, is name Bob. Easy. All right. Again, I'm going to connect it, make sure my lines are all straight. Oops. Let's fix that there. This needs to move over a little. And yes, I do great on these little tiny details. So it does take a little practice, a little time, but you'll get there. His name Bob. And typically what I would say, we're going to flow downhill. So we can see that if the name is Bob, I'm going to print hello Bob. If it's not Bob, I'm going to ask who are you? All right. So I'm going to, if the name is Bob, I'm going to print thing the right size. I could have done this a little faster, I realize. Um, print. Hello, Bob. All right. And uh, I'm going to speed up just a little bit here. So let's see. So that's my yes. And I'm actually going to type yes. All right. So I can clearly see that if the answer is yes, then I'm going to print hello, Bob. The answer is no. Well, I got to come out here and say if the answer is no, what does it do? Hop over here and take a look. It says, uh, "Who are you?" All right, so I'm going to print. And that's my no. Add a no right there. Go ahead and make this thing look right. All right. And then either way, the program ends after it does that. So that's what another terminator always at the bottom. Remember flow charts because they flow functionally down, right? So the flow chart goes downhill. So after I decide if it's yes or no, I go to end and I just tie my ends in. There's one end. You see my line's a little crooked, so I'm going to make that pretty. Try that again until it's just right, because I know Mr. B takes points off. Um, because he's cruel that way. 
That's not bad. If we zoom in, we'll find that that's okay. And then my no, always tie to the original lines. Don't have two different lines going to your terminator. So you can see those tie in very nicely. And that's my flow chart. And you can see it flows top to bottom. And I can see exactly how the program works. There you go.